I am on fire. Um, I got to ride a horse this morning and then I came home and saw the amazing Brianna do her response. So I'm just getting on top of her. That's gonna, that's gonna show up someplace. Thank God no one's here to hear that. Um, and, oh, I already said, um, I'm so sorry. Drink and answer her question and ask my question and say, hi guys. My husband comes home tomorrow. Thank you. And my kid's still at school, so I have a little bit of time to talk and respond because I don't know when else I would be able to respond. I should turn this around so I can't see the hair sticking out of my head. Brianna asked what I would like my last meal to be. And um, I immediately thought, well, what am I dying of? Am I okay with dying? Can I still eat? What's happening? And, uh, and then I decided that was not exactly in the spirit of the question. So assuming I have all my faculties, physical and mental, and I am comfortable and happy with my imminent demise, I have a few options. Uh, the first thing that came to mind was I used to live in Philadelphia. A good cheesesteak and like a truck cheesesteak. Not, I'm, I, my experience with Pat's and Gino's both was that they had to turn things out so quickly that the onions never got caramelized. They just kind of were warm. And I want cheesesteak with fried onions. And since I'm gonna die tomorrow, I don't have to care about the response of you purists. I want American cheese, mayonnaise. Yes, disgusting, don't care, gonna die anyway. Maybe I die of a heart attack and ketchup. That's what I want on my cheesesteak. Then I thought, well, while people are making me food, uh, there's a place in Portland, Oregon called Jake's Famous Crawfish. And they used to have a dish that was gorgonzola Dungeness crab tortellini. Oh, God, I would have sex with that food if I could. I would eat that. And then this was the last entry into my mind was uh, my husband and I went to Maui for our honeymoon because it was cliche, but it was cliche because it was a good idea. And I had poke, poke, pokey, poke. You know what I'm talking about. It was avocado and tuna. And we were sitting outside next to the ocean. The road was far enough away so you couldn't see any cars. It smelled like all of the plumeria was blooming and the seaside and there was a little boy bringing fish up from the boat for the next round. So good. So I think that would be my last meal, assuming I could have the entire experience because it was just like heaven. And I'm assuming, you know, who knows what happens after you die. So it'd be nice to go to heaven before you die. Uh, dessert would be the same in all three cases. It would be cookie casa, made a chewy molasses cookie that she turned into a sandwich with buttercream frosting. And they are closed, which the takeaway from this is I'm clearly not going to die, at least not tomorrow, because I can't have my cookie casa cookie for dessert. Oh, I like food too. The other thing with all of them is I, I'm, um, I'm wheat reactive and I get all bloated and big and puffy and uncomfortable. And it would be nice to eat without going, oh, I'm gonna regret this tomorrow. Be like, nope, dying tomorrow. Yay, more cookies. That would be it, that would be it. We do have to, I have to say, when we are at conventions, um, we've learned to eat whatever the band orders because Mike Borja is a brilliant food orderer and Steve Norton can find the restaurants in town. And so we have given up trying to do our own thing. We just say, what, what they're having, uh, add an extra for us, please. I, my hair like that, I know I braided it. I was too lazy to even dry it. That's, that's, that's the kind of day it is, but that's okay, I'm here. <sighs> Hi guys, we're not at a convention, but we're still chiming in because we love them, support the cons. And we love you and ooh, um, and I can't figure out how to make my laptop work so I'm still doing this on my phone sorry my question for Brianna which I love how we're doing this we're kind of um, 
answering and chiming and thinking, she said something that I personally adore, is that we are, like, she's one of my best friends, and we complement each other. We definitely have similar sensibilities. We have similar outlooks. We have, we, we resonate with each other on a deep, deep core, but there's some things where we go, oh, I'm glad you see it that way, because I don't, but somebody should. So, Brianna asked me about food. I'm going to ask you, Brianna, if we were doing these live streams together, sitting next to each other, what is one thing you think I would share or start to share that you would make an effort to go, ooh, no, no, take it down, take it down, take it down. And what is one thing I would probably try to stop you from sharing? And now I will, I will answer that question because that's what inspired the question is thinking about this. Um, I have, I'm an oversharer and I'm super feely. I'm the emo girl. And so there's, there's this one incident in particular where we were all sitting around after a convention and, you know, having a few drinks. I was not having a few drinks, but that's okay. That just, everybody takes a few drinks to get on my level anyway. I've accepted that. I don't need drinks to take off my clothes and dance on bar stools or get super emo. And in this case, I was overwhelmed with love for Rob Benedict. And so I gave him the story of why I was so scared to sing in public and how his consideration and love has helped me overcome this fear. Now I've written about it. I'm not going to go into it right now, but it's dark. Like there was genuine PTSD around it. And so, I'm just sitting around having fun, and I go into this story, and then I left. I went back because I had to get an airplane to go home. And afterwards, I was texting with Brianna. I said, "Was that was that too much? Did that that didn't go over well? That didn't go. That was a bad idea." And Brianna, in her loving, wonderful way, said, "It was a little dark to go out on." So I think um, I would probably start to share something genuine and authentic, but possibly not in the spirit of celebration and fun. I would probably go emo feely. And, uh, and Brianna, you would have to pull me back from the edge for the sake of all of our viewers. Kim, Kim, no, 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 not right now. That's what your blog is for. Please, no, 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 no. I'm not saying she stops me from crying because she 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 wouldn't do this out of it being wrong on my part. She would do this out of wanting to protect me from my own emotional fallout when I realized I've just gone into a 20-minute diatribe about something really painful. Ooh, not fun. Not a fun party trick. I'm that girl. Uh, and I'm that girl at conventions, too. <laughs> like, and now's the moment in the convention when I cry and ask you to join me. And uh, I suspect at some point in our journey together, Brianna, I may ask you to stop and not take your bra off. Not that there's anything wrong with it again. Like, woo, all for it. And I wouldn't ask you to not do it. I'd ask you to stop and count to 10 because it's your fucking fabulous body and you are fucking fabulous at whatever you want to do with it. But I would ask you to just breathe for a second. Is this really what you want to see in gifts for the next 10 years? They would be awesome, and I know I would, but just think about it. So that would be, that would be what I think you might have the instinct to do that I would probably put the momentary kibosh on. So, to you, what would I probably do? And if I answered the way you would probably answer, sorry, I took your answer. I think in that case, and like, you know, complimentary, I agree with what you were talking about. Our responsibility to the fans is to be available, as available as humanly possible and, um, and honest. I like that. You have, and you've been a really great teacher for me. You, Brianna, and you people have been a really great teacher for me in saying the best thing I can do for me and for world happiness 
is be me and be happy. And when I see other people doing that, it does inspire me to be myself, to be more me and to find the parts of me that I'm filtering and denying and allow myself to resist the fear that's telling me it's not okay. Because all of they that tell me I can't do that, they say you shouldn't do that. That's, that's generally up here. We've already discussed. The voice is up here. I have a friend who, uh, who occasionally texts me out of the blue. He'll just text me and say, don't listen to the voices in your head. They're cunts. I'm like, you know what? You're absolutely right. Fuck you little voices in my head. I acknowledge that you exist. I don't have to pay you any mind at all. Ah, so that's that. That's kind of all I got, though. But there's some people in here with me. So now I'm going to read. Hi, the voices are never helpful. They aren't because they're how we were programmed. Somebody wrote on my last one, my first thought is how I was programmed. My second thought is what I can learn. So the voices aren't helpful because most of us grew up learning from fear. I'm scared to do that because I'm scared the results will not be good. I'm scared to say that because it'll make somebody angry. I'm, I'm, and so fear is a big teacher. So fear has a big megaphone in my head. And, you know, the more I live, the more I can just go, oh, huh, yeah, that doesn't apply in this situation. Ah, uh, amen, sister, amen, woo! Is there anything else? Currently hiding in the office at work, listening to this quietly. I will whisper for a second then. Uh, Asylum 18, Van Con. Oh, I saw a question on Brianna's uh, stream. Will we still be doing the pajama parties late into the year? Yes, every, as of now, every con that we are scheduled to be at will include a PJ party. And it will be refined and honed and streamlined and the fun will only magnify. So by the end of the year, we will be prime party throwers. Not unlike the party we threw. We, I did throw Brianna a party in Los Angeles when we were here and I invited all the con people and all the con people's children. So this was just, and I moved, a, I moved all the furniture out of the way and it was a kid's party. It was hilarious. And I have to tell you, Elena Huffman has the most, ch well, Mike, well, and Billy too. Okay, the children of the people I work with are all scrumptious. They're just, every single one of them, these bright little beings. I don't know how we all got so lucky. Uh, the most beautiful people have lived lives of color, took risks, and made mistakes. Man, if I had not made mistakes, I wouldn't be who I am now. So I can choose to regret my mistakes or I can choose to like what they taught me. Oh, there we go, right there. Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Uh, you just got home from teaching. Yay, thank you for teaching our children. My parents were both teachers. I don't know if you know that. Both of my parents were teachers. And that was wonderful in some way and frustrating in some ways, but it gave me an incredible level of appreciation for what teachers do. Heroes. I mean, we laud public heroes who save lives, and I think we could equally laud the public school heroes who are creating lives. So thank you. Believe me, it is not lost. Oh, hey, oh, speaking of public school, there was something else I wanted to tell you. I thought of this last time. I was like, I should go add this in. Um, in terms of what my responsibility is to you and my gratitude for you, people being you, a few years ago, my daughter's school had a horrible leak and the library flooded. And so I went to Twitter and asked you to help with fundraising for it. And it was hard for me to do. It was hard for me to ask for help, but this was something that was really big and important to me. I would like to fast forward now, and this may be the emo moment that Brianna would be stopping me because I'm gonna get mushy, but for those of you who don't know, my daughter is autistic, and she has a one-on-one -on -one who helps her personally through the day, and a lot of times my daughter becomes overwhelmed by the classroom environment. 
and has to go to the library. My daughter would not have a place to go to feel safe and calm and quieted and comforted and return to the world if it weren't for you. Literally, literally, my child's well-being is because of you. Come the fuck on, how lucky am I? So I love you. That's me freaking out so I don't start crying. Uh, you didn't know about, yes, yes. She is, my daughter is autistic and funny and sharp and independent and passionate. And I, it's all just a ball of who this person is. And she has taught me so much. She's my greatest teacher and she's one of my heroes. <sighs> so there you go. Um, still in touch with my first grade teacher after 33 years. I should find one of my high school teachers. If anybody from Benson Tech is still in contact with June Conway, I have some words of love I would like to share with her. I'll go on Facebook and look that up afterwards. But yeah, Miss Conway, man. <sighs> Gifts that are coming back a long time later. I need purple hair. I do need purple hair. I like the gray though, right? Look, that's me. I quit dyeing it to see what would happen. And I kind of like it. Um, also, it's money saved that I put to a horse. If you're ever wondering if you should start riding horses, it's super expensive. My daughter only gets one pair of shoes and I buy all my con clothes from Amazon and Marshalls because the horse gets all my money and I don't care. Uh, what was my last meal choice? Well, that's the beginning of the thing. You can rewind it. Um, autistic people are some of the most wise intellectual people. I work with several. I love them more than anything. Does she still have the stuffed goat? She has, okay, so Brianna said no more Kit Kats. I'm gonna say the stuffy thing has gotten out of control for my kid. She has them all. She, she gives them creative names like White Goat uh, and, and, <laughs> and Pink Penguin and other penguin and Big Penguin. <laughs> I had to put the kibosh on the stuffies because the room is overflowing. And every single one of them. She's like, no, 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 I need that one. Ah, stuffies. It's stuffies everywhere. Friends used to think I was rich because before, hi, Bella, ride horses until they realize because I ride horses, I am poor. Totally. Give Peter a kiss for me. My family rode and trained horses for 20 years. Look, it took all of our money. It does. And it's so, I was talking to a gal this morning who said, it's kind of like heroin. There's no, once you discover riding a horse, there's not really a substitute. Like you just have to quit and do without it. And I'm not willing to do that because right now it is the only thing in my life I do that occupies all of my brain at the same time. I am never on a horse thinking, oh gosh, did I remember to turn the dryer off? I wonder if those pants still fit me. I think I'm gonna ask to sing a different song. No, my entire mindset, every single cell in my brain is going, don't die, don't die, don't die, don't die, don't die, sit, no, oh, sit, you're on, you're telling him not, what did you, okay, don't die, don't die, don't, don't die, don't, up, up straight, up, don't, don't die, don't die, don't die, gonna die, don't die, don't die. Don't, sorry for the person that was listening to this quietly in your office, sorry. Uh, yes, so. And I'm still just at a walk, trot, canter. We occasionally jump over things. I've taken a few jumps. The horse I'm on now jumps over things that are flat on the ground. Because as the same girl said, you know, Tonka jump poles before poles jump Tonka. The poles must be levitated over, even if they're flat on the ground. Ah, uh, don't die. I know, don't die. Um, only been on a horse three times, but I loved it. It's addictive. Went riding for the first time last summer. So awesome. Never ridden a horse. If you don't want to ride a horse, don't get on a horse. Don't do it. They're far off the ground. But if you want to ride a horse, go ride a horse. I'm excited for the thing that you're doing with the shirts. Oh, on Monday, it's not going to be shirts. Some of you might be familiar with, a, with an artist, with a photographer who goes by uh, Stardust and Melancholy. Um, she created something that Creation Stands said, can we 
contact her. So I actually had the least of all to do with this. Um, but uh, she's really the one who's behind what's happening on Monday. And, uh, and I'll write something. And you'll see the full glory of it or you'll go, fuck you. Meh, it's up to you. They can tell if you're scared. The horses, I know, they can. In fact, my horse gets antsy if I'm just not sitting on my sit bone, but instead moving forward on the pelvis. He's like, what are you, what, what? What are you telling me, what? Um, am I going to be on any more Supernatural this season? Not that I know of, but I would always love it. Don't fall off a horse and get a concussion because then you can't ride for months and want to die. Yes, last time I was on a horse, you were thrown off. Yeah, I'm waiting for my first big fall. I had sort of what I considered a fall on my last horse, but they all told me it was not a fall. It was considered an emergency dismount because I just kind of slid over. And he looked at me as if to say, why are you there, strange person? Uh, have you been able to wear the jacket all the time? I love that jacket. That wayward jacket, I love it so much. I want you to be my spirit animal. I want to be you when I grow up. Don't grow up. Don't grow up. Be you. Be better. Just be us. Big. Loud. Fierce. Ferocious. Or quiet. Happy. Withdrawn. It doesn't matter. Like, you don't have to be an extrovert to be all you. And the purpose, while I'm on it, and we're going all over the place today, the purpose of introverts is not to be an audience for extroverts. Let that sink in, if you're an extrovert or an introvert. We complement each other. Uh, I feel like a noodle. My body is like, what's a horse? How do you horse? How to horse? I uh, rode a horse once, not for me. Prefer feet on the ground, yes. Um, make you and Brianna friendship bracelets. Yeah. Uh, introvert, I love you, thank you. Thanks for the advice, preach, yes, amen. Okay, so last time I went on for a really long time and I don't need to do that now. Oh, no, I already asked Brianna her question. Well, that's all I got. It's 1.35. I'm going to go get some water and possibly coffee and go pick my kid up. I have a date with her tonight. We're going to go out. So, there we have it. Mwah! I love you. And, oh, good. It's this time. And now, and now we come to the part where Kim tries to remember which button. Oh, hey, see, I made it easy for myself. It's the button that says finish. Bye.